What is up, ladies and gentlemen? It's Connie Pro here with another video for you guys today. Um, now lately, you know, I've been getting uh specifically from one person, but more than happy to help out, even if it's generally meant for one person. I know it's gonna help out many more. Um, I've been asking, you know, they've been having a bit of trouble with Photoshop CS6 snooker balls or billiard balls, whatever, whatever floats your boat. And so I'll be like, you know, whatever, I'll, I'll I'll help. And so this is my little tutorial on how to make it. Now this is this will be pretty much in depth. So you know, stay around for because this is gonna be quite a long video, roughly 15 minutes. But it will show you pretty cool, and I'm gonna explain some of the 3D things um, on the extend version version, which you will need. So this will be overall helpful for not only one person. Anyways, let's get started. I'm going to create a new Photoshop file. And really this doesn't matter. Um it really doesn't matter on the on what you put in these slots except for here, of course, but um your width and height put in pixels uh is my suggestion. Really doesn't matter. Bigger is better because uh it's just going to render better. But it really doesn't matter if it's small. However, I'm gonna put mine in full HD. Sorry for the plane if you can actually hear it. Um, I'm gonna put mine in full HD. Well, in HD, so it'll fit in the better. Uh, fit be it'll fit better in the video. Sorry. <laughs> Anyways, here you're gonna need 72 pixels per inch, not centimeter. Per inch. And background background contents white RBG color 16 bit not 32 you can have 8 but it's better to have 16 uh, be prepared for you know quite a large file size for just a picture and then you're gonna need square pixels here if you open the advanced slot slider and here you're gonna need srbg just here just or just take here working rbg it also works and you're gonna press okay okay right now like usual we're gonna take the gradient tool right here gradient tool G and you're gonna pick your foreground color so I'm gonna try it with uh, hopefully it won't turn out too bad pink and just get a darker pink so really it turns into a purple and we'll make this a bit more brighter right and you're gonna a uh, good rule of thumb when you're doing the gradient tool is that you, where you start is where your foreground color is gonna be where you end it where you end it's gonna be your background color so as you can see here this is my foreground color and this is my background color and to be honest, that doesn't look all too all that great. So I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna choose this type of cyan blue. And that's a completely different story. Okay, I like it like this. Now I'm gonna create a new layer. With that, you're gonna click the paint bucket tool. So here you're probably gonna need to right click or just hold click and go paint bucket. Now, as your foreground, you're gonna pick. Well, I'm doing a, a nine ball, so I'm gonna pick yellow. Once you've got your color picked out, you're gonna go here to the rectangular marquee tool, and you're gonna need to select about this much. Um, say about maybe two fifths of the actual canvas and you're gonna press well actually first you're gonna put, put your background color to white and then you're gonna press control delete why control delete because if you do just normal delete you're gonna get the actual background layers color while here we want the white so we're gonna press control delete and you're gonna keep the same selection just drag it down same thing control delete and you're good and select off the canvas so you don't have or just think control D also deselects yeah control D um, once again sorry for the planes 
they fly pretty low above my house so you can hear them anyways now you're gonna go here it's probably be on default rectangle tool so you're just gonna right click or hold click and go to ellipse tool and make your foreground white now holding shift to make a perfect circle I'm gonna make a circle that's not too big but not too small either and I'm gonna select both layer one and eclipse one select move tool um, it, it won't work if you don't have move tool on and take the align vertical centers and align horizontal centers and that should be good then you're just gonna take your text tool pick your font um, for me I've already done this a couple times and I know a hundred fits perfectly in here so that's exactly what I'm gonna do make sure your text is black and using the move tool I'm gonna select all the layers and do the same process now, as we know um, a nine ball if you have seen a snooker ball or billiard ball has a little thing underneath to indicate which way the number is so I'm gonna make space moving with my arrow keys a bit up take my text tool and doing a closed bracket and put this to 70 All right now I'm gonna press check mark and then I'm gonna press control T and hold shift to perfectly get 90 degrees All right and then I'm just gonna move it right here um, you might as well just select both once again and just don't, oh, don't, don't do that one so that's not too smart when you put this about how you like it I like this distance the distance or we can you can have this um, all we're looking at is for the distance so I like it about there just to prove you that you don't it doesn't matter if you're aligned I like it about there so I'm just gonna select both and you don't want to press this one you just want to press this one and it will align then you're gonna merge by pressing control E and then you're gonna select all these layers not background and once again uh, do the normal alignments and then we're good with that you're gonna go to 3d new mesh from layer mesh preset and sphere now you're gonna get some weird things going on here just don't worry about it before you click anything just click near one of the corners not near this corner just click like top right corner so you're, you just deselect anything that needs to be deselected now you're gonna move your billiard ball, ball but don't use the inside don't move the inside move the outside so stay near the outside like that and I want mine to be something like like that I'm gonna move the infinite light this is where you can move it it's about right I don't know to be honest right there and you will see why yep right there all right, and um, because Photoshop's th new 3D, you can't really see normally. At least I don't know how to see normally. But for that matter, just click on the marquee tool or any tool really doesn't matter to get out of that view. And actually, I'm gonna adjust my light more. So I'm gonna click the light and adjust it like that, and I'm happy. Now we can totally stop here um, because. Photoshop, uh, the new 3D has its own presets. It looks pretty okay. I mean, we could totally stop here. I wouldn't do the reflection just because it has this shadow, which you can remove. Also, this, you can remove the infinite light. But I'm going to make it so it looks a bit more interesting, let's say. So I'm not going to merge just yet. I'm going to uh, open this up and I'm going to double click. Well, I'm not going to double click. I'm just going to click on our ball 
go to 3D or if you don't see that just go to window 3D and I'm gonna click on sphere material and I'm gonna put shine to 100 percent that's what I usually do you don't have to it really depends to you I'm also gonna put my diffuse to pure white Now that's done, I'm going to go to infinite light 1, and I'm going to change nothing because I like the, the actual default presets. Now that that's done, I'm going to go back to my layers. I'm going to merge both of them, and now I'm going to do some filtering, uh, render, lighting effects. This is where it gets pretty cool. Now this is my default. Um, I've already done this a couple times, so it actually saves where it was last time. Um, so to be honest, I'm gonna keep it like that because I do like it. But just move it around. Move it back to the corner. Move it around. Play with it. You can make this smaller. I do advise you to make the scale length wide, like that. Like I was getting it wider there. Wide because it does look just a tiny bit better and really that looks nice uh, to be honest I really like this Photoshop has really improved and I hope you plan on getting CS6 extended because it's pretty cool thanks have a nice day